This program is brought to you by Emory University. What I'm thinking about a lot of is that but I'd rather be here hurting, sweating, in pain, breathing hard, lungs are burning. Or right, I'd rather be one of those family members of somebody that was killed overseas. And, and you know, that's what makes me appreciative of the opportunity to be here instead of there. Deep breath. There's much more to Nick Gibson. Deep breath than the stethoscope and white coat Deep breath. of an Emory Physician's Assistant student. Okay. Anything that, that you can do that, that is something that most people wouldn't want to do has always been appeal, uh, an appeal to me. He's a pararescue jumper in the United States Air Force Reserves who served multiple tours overseas, and now he's training for a taller challenge, Mount Everest. Reading books back when I was not even climbing, uh, I'd always thought that uh, had a draw to Everest and thought it would be an amazing accomplishment to be able to stand on top of something like that. The beauty of pararescue is you do it to help others. And so uh, there's something instilled, I think, in your heart before you even start that draws you to that career field. And so this, is, this really isn't any different from that. It really isn't different than that attitude because Gibson isn't climbing Everest just to achieve a personal goal. He's a member of the first all-U.S. military team in the United States Air Force Seven Summits Challenge. The Seven Summits Challenge, which is the highest point on each continent, it was the idea of two pilots, Air Force pilots. They'd started off climbing uh, in Europe together and kind of said, well, why not keep going with it? Why not uh, use this as something to benefit the Air Force, to show the Air Force name in, in a positive light and help to motivate others and, and inspire others to go out and pursue their dreams. And so we're, we're just getting a bunch of airmen together and, and, and gonna go, uh, go see what we can do on Everest. The challenge is to climb the highest peak on all seven continents and raise money for the Special Operations Warrior Foundation. Everest is the last of the seven and the first for Gibson. The organization's already raised over 60,000 uh, for this organization that helps the family members and kids of uh, those who have fallen. And on top of that, this trek is also to raise awareness of veterans' health issues. We lost more people uh, to suicide, more, more military personnel to suicide last year than we did in Afghanistan. And that's just something we can't accept as a nation. Um, that is war on our own soil, and, and we're losing. To do all this, though, Gibson has to prepare himself. That means training and lots of it. You have to kind of take an inventory of what you have. Uh, here in Atlanta, obviously, I don't have the temperatures. Uh, I don't have the winds. I don't have avalanche hazards. I have to create opportunities is what it comes down to. So Stone Mountain was a, a natural choice. For most Stone Mountain hikers, it's usually a gentle take your time and bring the kids kind of walk. That doesn't work when your next hike is nearly 29 times higher than this piece of stone. Stone Mountain is, uh, is, is you know, a thousand feet of vertical gain and uh, Everest you got to get up to 29,035 feet and you got to do it with a lot more gear, you have to do it with big heavy boots and crampons on, you're attached to a rope, you're having to negotiate around people, uh, you're on serious ledges and places where you could slip and fall. So it really is nothing compared to that uh, and, and that's not even taking into account the, the altitude this is just a piece of Gibson's training. He also included CrossFit. We did our usual warm-up stretching, and then we did a mile run. Uh, I, had, I ran with the 32-pound uh, vest on, and then we started a series of three rounds of dragging a sled. And a sled's probably 15 or 20, and then we added 170 pounds. All right, let's see it. I would drag that out 40 yards approximately, and then do um, 10 swings with the sledgehammer onto the tire, uh, alternating sides, 10 on each side, drag the sled back, and then did jump burpees with the, 30, with the vest on, and did three rounds of that. How difficult was that? I'm trying not to throw up right now, so. <laughs> Pulling that heavy sled and I've got the weight vest on and I'm tired and I'm breathing heavy. Um, you can think about it as, as the same as 
each step that you take up the mountain and every time you uh, kick those crampons into the snow that uh, it's, a, it's another step closer to your goal. I'm honored to get an opportunity to do this so I would be disrespecting it if I didn't push myself as much as I could here. Finding the time to train for Gibson was almost as difficult as the training itself. How are you feeling this morning? He's in his final year of physician's assistant school in Emory's School of Medicine and will help with medical care on the yeah. mountain. It is a bit of a, a juggling act. Uh, I definitely, my free time kind of has gone out the window. I had to put aside some of the training to right. get through this medicine because overall I'm here to go to physician assistant school and become a physician assistant. They've been able to give me four months off from my schedule to be able to train up and do the expedition and uh, then come back and pick back up in my rotation. But the time is just, uh, it's relentless. You just have to, it's a true test of dedication. But for Gibson, the juggling and training is all well worth it, knowing where he's going and who he's going for. There's not one ounce of this to me that is not worth it. And I have the rare opportunity to do something that I love to do for uh, a cause that I believe in with all of my heart and honor people that I have more respect for than anybody else in the world. For Emory University Communications, I'm Corey Bromenfolks. The preceding program is copyrighted by Emory University.